Live Text Access Training for Real-Time Interlingual Subtitlers. This is Unit 1, Understanding Accessibility, Element 1, Basic Concepts. This video lecture revolves around types of disabilities and the concept of access services. My name is Rocío Bernabé from the Internationale Hochschule Este in München in Germany. I have prepared this video lecture in collaboration with the European Federation of Heart of Hearing, in short, EFO. On completion of this training sequence, you will be able to classify disabilities, disabilities by types of impairments and to explain the function of access services. You will also learn the difference between access services and two other terms often used in this context. These two terms are assistive technologies and reasonable accommodations. Let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we will discuss the characteristics of the term impairment as defined by the World Health Organization and how this term is used in the definition of a type of disability. Then, we will discuss how access services have emerged to provide access to content for persons who cannot access this content in the original form. Lastly, the video lecture will end with a summary. Types of disability. Article 1 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, in short CRPD, explains that disability emerges when a person with a long-term impairment encounters barriers that hinder him or her participating effectively on an equal basis. The underlying idea is that disability occurs in the interaction of a person with an impairment and barriers of an environment. The example on the screen illustrates this idea. A wheelchair user may not be able to participate to participate equally on a daily basis activity such as traveling by train when the only access way is stairs. This example shows how environments can create barriers, in this case physical barriers, that hinder participation on an equal basis. Disability is often linked to a type of long-term impairment. In this sense, we often talk about sensory, physical, cognitive, and speech disabilities. Indeed, we could say that this is not entirely correct because it is not the impairment itself that causes the state of disability. In other words, the impairment, the impairment is just one part of the equation. The International Classification of Functioning Disability and Health Impairment defines impairment as a significant deviation or loss in a body function or body structure. According to this classification provided by the World Health Organization, such a loss or deviation can be sensory, physical, cognitive or related to the speech. These are the terms that we often use to label a type of disability. Let's take a look at them. Sensory disabilities are related to a loss or a full loss of a sense, be it sight, hearing, or both. When two senses are affected, we talk about dual sensory impairments. This is the case of the deaf-blind. The causes of a sensory impairment can be manifold. Some persons are born with the impairment, while others experience the loss later in life. The development, uh, this development has an impact on the communication method that a person may prefer. For instance, persons um, born deaf or with profound hearing loss often consider sign language as their first language compared to persons with a less severe hearing loss who often prefer to communicate in standard language. Speech disabilities are related to the inability to produce a speaking voice. This is also known as mutism or to the inability to articulate words or sounds. 
In the same line, physical disabilities are related to the inability to move body parts or coordinate movement and also to paralysis. Lastly, cognitive access, uh, disabilities excuse me, are related to impairments that affect mental processes such as perception, memory, thinking or understanding. When media products and audiovisual environments are not accessible, access services provide persons with a disability with an alternative way to access content. The term access services or accessibility services is used in audiovisual media contexts to refer to services that convey content in an alternative way. Real-time subtitles are an example. This access service provides persons with hearing loss with subtitles as, an, as a written alternative to spoken speech or other information that is, that is conveyed orally, for instance, music or sounds. Two terms which you often come across with in the context of disability and accessibility are assistive products and reasonable accommodations. Assistive products or technologies are any devices that help persons with a disability to perform on an equal basis and independently in their daily lives. Two examples are hearing devices, also called hearing aids, and hearing loops. You will learn more about these devices in the video lectures of element 2 in this unit. Reasonable accommodations is a term that is mostly used in working and educational contexts. Reasonable accommodations are adjustments or modifications that enable persons with a disability to participate on an equal basis. For instance, the provision of an access service in court is a reasonable accommodation. This access service can be, for example, real-time subtitles or sign language interpreting. The ability and interplay of assistive products, access services and accommodations enable inclusion um, through accessibility. These terms or these um, services are not interchangeable, they are complementary. Why? Well, because each of these solutions help in a different way and in different situations. Let's take a look at some examples. Persons with hearing loss always make an extra effort to listen and understand and use several communication strategies to clarify and double check that they are receiving the right message. These strategies can be using a hearing aid, lip reading or reading subtitles. Therefore, accessibility can only be possible when all these input possibilities are available. The reason is actually that all of them, all these possibilities also have their limitations. For instance, hearing aids work outside and the normal hearing range of 2 and 20 decibels and are noisy. Lip reading is only possible if the image quality is good and only if one person is speaking at a time. Similarly, subtitles are fine, but only if they are correct and accurate. An example of uh, assistive products, um, access services and reasonable accommodations for persons with sight loss would be this one. A university professor with sight loss uses a screen reader which um, is an assistive product on, on his or her computer to create lectures, to work in general. When this professor must speak at a conference, he or she may request the university to provide a sighted guide who would help assist him or her with travel and navigating the conference center. This would be a reasonable accommodation. Lastly, at home, these professor may use the access service called audio description to watch a movie. 
Lastly, an example that includes a person with cognitive loss. Maybe this person doesn't even use any assistive products because um, she or he does not have a sensory impairment. The same person, however, may use the access service um, easy to read subtitles to watch a documentary film or the news. Similarly, a person with a cognitive loss can request their company to provide a document in easy to read language when this person needs to read and understand the content of this document to fulfill his or her duties. Let's recap. Today, we have discussed that disabilities are often classified or labeled according to the type of impairment. We have also seen that the concept of impairment in this context is understood as a significant deviation or loss as defined by the World Health Organization. We have also seen that in the context of disability, this impairment must be a long-term impairment. We have also seen that environments that have uh, not been designed for all persons create barriers and hinder access. In audiovisual context, access services have emerged to provide these persons with an alternative way to access this information. The type of access service depends on the type of disability. I encourage you to take a look at the PowerPoint presentation to this video lecture. There, you can find links to some other examples of assistive technologies and access services. As for now, I say goodbye and many thanks. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide and in the PowerPoint file. LTA, Live Text Access, Universiteit Autonoma de Barcelona, SDI, Internationale Hochschule, Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici, ZDF, Digital, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People, FO, Velotype, Sub-T Access, European Certification and Qualification Association, ECQA. Co-funded by the Erasmus Plus Programme of the European Union. Erasmus Plus Project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-004219. The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.